Well, Governor Cuomo has demonstrated tremendous leadership in transportation, and his commitment further emphasizes the importance of the MTA to the region and New York State and city. Chairman Loda has just laid out a framework for transformation that means it's going to be exciting to be part of the MTA going forward. We are committed to making a difference. And that has led us here today. So give me an opportunity to explain the challenge and explain some of the historical context by which led us here today. Here in New York, we have a legacy of building not for today, but in fact for what we can become. This is a, a historical photo of Queens. This was the example of you build it and they come. The New York City subway system is one of our greatest achievements. The first subway, and you heard it uh, mentioned earlier, opened in 1904, running from City Hall up to 145th Street. By 1905, the annual ridership in the system was 137 million customers. Over the next few decades, three separate privately owned companies had subway lines that opened in New York what we refer to as the old BMT, the IRT, and the IND. Now, the subway at that time was a tremendous success. But by the early 1940s, the three private companies could no longer care and finance those subway systems. So what happened? The subway lines were merged, and they were taken over by the city of New York. Then, in the light of broader post-World War II trends, that is sub suburbanization, the rise in private car ownership, and dis disinvestment, chronic disinvestment in our cities, led to the fading of what was the magnificence of the subway system. In 1965, New York State stepped in and formed what would become the MTA, and so to save the subway system and to grow the regional economy. There were two fundamental challenges. The first, it was funded year to year, which limited the ability to invest long term in the system. The second, years of neglect. Years of neglect had left the subway in a very fragile state. And it was dangerous. 1981, the year I came back to the city and rode the subway every day from Queens to my job in Midtown, there were 5,700 track fires, there were 21 collisions and derailments in that 12-month time period, and there were over 4,900 robberies. You never rode the train alone. And then there was the graffiti. And there was more graffiti, lots of it. The system was at a breaking point then. New York State recognized that the MTA needed the ability to plan and invest in a capital program and address those decades of neglect. And so in 1982, the state initiated the first MTA capital program. And we went to work. We started fixing much of the core operating infrastructure that hadn't been touched and maintained effectively over 70 years. And it worked. People started using the subway again. I think that's me in the back. And they came in droves. The MTA was, in fact, fulfilling its mission. New York City and the metropolitan region grew more than 30% over the next several decades. Today, the governor and the chairman noted, the MTA provides over 8.7 million rides each day across our subway, our buses, our commuter rail systems, and the majority of those rides are on the New York City subway system. Let's look at some numbers. Our average weekday ridership is over 5.6 million people, and we have many 6 million rider days. Our annual ridership is over 1.7 billion. We have 472 stations in the subway system. We have 665 miles of track in revenue service and more track in our yards and our shops and our maintenance facilities. Of course, we run underground, but we also run elevated above ground. New York City has the second most track miles in the world and the most stations in the world. 
One, we are also one of two of the, country, of the world's major cities that operates 24-7, 365. 71% of all transit rides in the United States of America occur right here on the New York City subway system. We have more trips than the next 10 systems combined. We make four times as many trips as the domestic airline system in our country. And one of our busiest corridors, the Lexington Avenue line, that ridership alone on that one line is greater than the entire DC Metro and Chicago systems combined. We operate two divisions of our subway system, and our track designs vary slightly between those two di divisions, requiring different types of cars and equipment. On the A division, which is the former IRT that I spoke about earlier, our numbered lines, those cars are, general, are 50 feet long and 9 feet wide. And those stations and train sets are typically 500 feet long. And the A division trains are interoperable within the A division lines. The B division, which is the combination of the old BMT and the IND, are cars that are generally 60 and 75 feet long and this 10 feet wide, different size. The stations and trains are typically 600 feet long. And the B division trains are also interoperable on those B division lines. The MTA has resurrected subway ridership in New York State. But as has been noted, we are still using a system that hasn't undergone a full real modernization in over a century. Today, our system includes 80-year-old signal equipment and interlockings to manage train movement. This is at West 4th Street. It's in use today. Our 52-year-old subway cars are some of the oldest in the world. And 70-year-old cloth-covered cables continue to be relied on. As a result, what happens? Old equipment, old components, there are failures, and they can lead to frustrating, dis systematic disruptions and delays. Our system, therefore, is again at a breaking point. We are aggressively combating a New York transit crisis. What are we doing right now? We're implementing a preventive maintenance program, but our immediate future, which leads us here today, is to increase our capacity and the reliability of the subway system. Right now, this spring, we launched a five-point improvement plan. We're going to increase our subway car fleet. We're going to improve our car maintenance procedures. We're going to enhance our tracks and our signals. We're going to mitigate delays associated with having to deal with sick customers or law enforcement activity. We're streamlining how customers move on and off trains. And we're going to target our system bottlenecks, because we know where they are. Additionally, moments ago, Governor Cuomo and Chairman Loda announced additional emergency actions to support a, rev a review and enhancement of our subway system. So that's our immediate future. We're here today to figure this out together. How are we going to increase the system's capacity and reliability? In order to increase that capacity in the near term, just building out new tracks is not a viable option. It takes too long. We have to do more with what we have. That means running more trains closer together and safely. To run trains closer, we need a new signaling system. Our existing system, designed at over 100 years ago, is at max capacity and, as we know, breaks down. But that's only part of the equation. The new signaling system needs to interface with a modern fleet of cars that can read and process those signals effectively. And all this needs to be transmitted through connectivity in a modern communications network. So it all fits together. The signal system, the subway cars, and the communications system. It's one ecosystem that will transform the New York City subway system. And we're looking for best-in-class international solutions in each of these three categories. That's our challenge. First, the signal system. 
we need to rapidly deploy a new system that can safely reduce the spacing between cars and so we can increase the throughput and the capacity of the system. On the subway car front, we have to rapidly deploy better subway cars in our system. We think the primary focus at this point is to be able to effectively refurbish our entire fleet and improve the car's performance and reliability. And on communications, we know we need to modernize and we need modern communications technology throughout the entirety of the network to facilitate the signaling system and to enhance our communications with our customers. These are the challenges that we are asking for your assistance. We think that with your help, we can meet these three challenges. That is the MTA Genius Transit Challenge. Thank you.